Welcome back to another episode of Ruthless TV where I break down Tyler Perry's Ruthless TV episodes scene by scene. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Now, we're two seasons in and we're on the fourth episode of the second season and I'm beginning to notice how some things just aren't quite adding up. And, um, we had the elder mothers in Joan discussing at different times that the escapees came from the red trailer and then we had um, elder mother Agnes saying that whoever uh, was in that red trailer like whoever was in charge of it like whichever elder mother it was that she will be punished and from what I'm understanding um, elder mother Agnes has the yellow trailer um, I'm really not sure what color Elder Mother Marva's trailer is, but they both said that they were glad that the escapees didn't come from their trailer. So, who's the other Elder Mother? Is there another one that we haven't seen yet? And, um, I don't know, maybe I missed it, so if I did miss it, let me know in the comments because, I, you know, I only thought there were two. First, I thought there was only one originally. And then, you know, they started saying another elder mother, then Agnes pops on the scene. Um, which brings me to my next point. I'm wondering why the other elder mothers treat Ruth as if she's the help. I've mentioned this in previous videos and I don't get why she um, doesn't have any rank. She doesn't have any pull. She doesn't have any power at all. And uh, she's never seen with the other elder mothers and you know nobody really gives her respect in that manner the way that they do the other elder mothers if Tally and them are doing dishes then Ruth is doing dishes and if the others are doing the laundry Ruth is also doing the laundry she's always around the members and she's never seen doing elder Thing. Oh, she's gone through the initiations and all this stuff, but you know, only to be disrespected and doing common chores. Okay, so the next thing that I noticed is the absence of Melinda. Where is she? You know, she went off on this assignment, and we haven't seen her at all in the second season. And I feel that you know her role is uh, very important and instrumental. Um, you know, to the Rakadushis, of course, and finding out, you know, what the sheriff's, the sheriff's office have on them. And, um, you know, legal-wise, her role was uh, so important at the very end of the season, but we haven't seen her at all in season two. The other thing that I noticed is back in season one, when uh, Lilo was visiting the compound, um, he was complaining to the highest about the reception there and, you know, the lack of him being able to, to use his cell phone. And then, you know, this season, Daikon has all the reception. He's got cell phones and um, he's definitely able to pull up Sarah's murder on the Internet and read that article you know very well he doesn't seem to have any issues with the reception and um, when he gave Clark the phone the cell phone to call him once they were captured you know no problems with the cell phone so I thought that was a little weird too I also noticed how the highest is he's very quick to order Yancey to get the <laughs> to get the buses up and running you know as if they're you know they've just been sitting there in the cold or you know through a season or two and he's got to get them up and running you know change the spark plugs and you know change the oil you know things like that but those buses oh my gosh it looks like they haven't ran in quite a while right and i posted on one of my facebook groups uh you know that it's going to take the highest jesus and all the angels to move those buses i mean those things look horrible i mean the chip the paint the paint is chipping on it you know they, they look so rough i mean it, it, they just look like they haven't been moved in years centuries even but i do know that the lights work really well on that bus because andrew was able to see yancey and tally very clear uh those lights were working for sure so it's, it's going to take more than those spark plugs that he was 
in such an uproar about with Tally to move those buses. You know, that's just, it, that was like hilarious to me that he's, oh, you know, tell Ian to get those buses up and running, you know, as if he could just, you know, do a quick oil change and they're good, right? So that was really funny to me. Now, last but not least, of course, uh, we were all curious about Tally's pregnancy. And on the last episode, we all discovered or found out that, well, she told Andrew that she wasn't pregnant, that she was, uh, she just had a late period. And, you know, <laughs> it's a very, very, very late period. I could say if it was like maybe a month or two, you know, you know, but we're talking, what, 13, 14, 16, 15 months here? <laughs> You know, how, how late can, can a, a woman be on, on, on a cycle, right? Um, but, you know, that was very strange to me. And, and then, you know, some people, I saw in, in one of the groups that I'm in that some people saw blood, some people didn't see blood in the actual episode. But, of course, Andrew's comment corresponded with the fact that there was no blood on his hands. So, I'm not sure if that was photoshopped and just kind of circulated. But that definitely, you know, that threw up, you know, I, I don't understand how one can have two versions of an episode or a scene and then it doesn't make sense because there was no blood on his hands when we saw it. When I saw it, there was absolutely no blood because he, he mentioned uh, her, you know, when he put his hand under her cloak that it was wet and moist, not bloody. So I'm not sure what that's all about but but that concludes all of my speculations and my observations for between season one and season two so i hope that you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe right. if you have see you next time